Now we are going to learn about the last part of this lesson. Monocotyledonous and dicotyledonous plants. In simple form, we call them monocots and dicots. Remember children, flowering plants, there are two other main groups. Okay, they are known as monocots and dicots. So under this part, we are going to learn what are the monocots, what are the dicots and what are the differences between these monocots and dicots. Okay. So we will write flowering plants are mainly divided into two groups as monocotyledonous or monocots and dicotyledonous or dicots, right? We will write monocotyledonous or monocots and Dicotyledonous dicots plants. Right? Flowering plants are mainly divided into two groups as monocotyledonous and dicotyledonous plants. We have an assignment to do here. We will see. Collect many seeds as far as possible from your kitchen. What are the seeds that you can find? We will find beans, right? Uh, chickpeas, cowpea, and paddy, right? Chickpea, cowpea, and corn. Or maize, okay? Paddy, uh, peanuts, and green grams. If you can find many other seeds, you can go for it. Okay, it says collect many seeds as far as possible. Because the more seeds you collect, the more seeds you can observe. Okay, children. So, take about five seeds from each type and soak them in water. Okay, so take the seeds out of water after about 24 hours. It means you have to soak these seeds in water for about one day, 24 hours. Right? And separate them into seed globes. So after soak these seeds really well, you should try to separate them. You will see some of these seeds, you can easily separate them into two equal halves. But there are some other seeds you will realize, no matter how much you try, you cannot separate them into two equal halves. It might break, but it won't separate into two equal halves. Understand? So separate them into seed lobes. These halves are known as seed lobes. And group them according to number of seed lobes. Seed leaves. These seed lobes are known as seed leaves as well. Understand children? Inside the seed. So you will realize after doing this activity, there are some seeds with two seed lobes and some other seeds are with only one seed lobe. Another name for seed lobes is seed leaves. Now we will go do this experiment. Right children, so we discussed about different types of seeds and the importance of seeds as well. So we are going to identify different types of seeds and parts of them today. And here we have uh, some different different types of seeds here. So first of all, you have to soak them in water for about 24 hours, right? So that you can separate them really easily. I'm going to check whether we can separate these seeds, different seeds we have. I'm going to check whether we can separate these seeds uh, easily. So we have many seeds here. Here we have chickpeas and we have peanuts, beans we have, right? This is a corn seed or maize and this is a paddy seed, right? And this is 
long bean seed. Right, we will check whether we can separate the seed into parts. I'm going to take this uh, peanut. Now, you can see we can easily divide it into two parts. Now, these parts, each part is known as the seed lobe, right? So, this peanut you can divide into two seed lobes very easily. What about this chickpea? We'll try to separate this as well. Yeah, this also separates into two equal halves very easily. Now, as I soak them in water, it's more easy to uh, separate it. What about the bean seed? Bean seed, I think you must have tried to separate these bean seeds when you are small. Right. You all can see this bean seed also divides into two parts easily. Now I'm going to take the paddy seed. Paddy seed, no matter how much I try, I cannot divide it into two parts like these seeds. Right? Now we are going to take maize or corn seed. And even this one, there's no way to separate it, right? So you can't divide it into two seed lobes. Only one lobe is there. And I'm going to take this long bean seed. We'll try to separate that, yes. Even that one, you can separate it into two, right? So now here we have an arachnid. Even inside this arachnid, you can see this arachnid has a fibrous cover, right? The seed is covered with the fibrous cover. So because of this fibrous cover, this arachnid can uh, float in water and it's really important for the dispersal of uh, seeds and fruits, right? So if I take this arachnid seed out and if I try to separate it, it's very difficult to separate it into two seed lobes, okay? Seed lobes means this one part is known as a seed lobe. So it's very clear, children, some of these seeds we can divide, we can separate into two seed lobes and some of them we cannot, right? So seeds with two seed lobes, so where you can divide these seeds into two parts, so these type of seeds are known as dicot seeds, right? So other seeds where you cannot divide into two seed lobes are known as monocot. Mono means one, di means two. So these type of seeds, they have two seed lobes, right? That's why they are known as dicot and or two cotyledons and they are known as uh, dicot seeds, right? So some other seeds are there like this paddy and maize. They don't have uh, two cotyledons, they have only one cotyledon, right? So they are known as monocoto only one is there therefore they are known as monocot seeds right children so did you see that activity did you all do that activity at home i hope you all have done now you all have to do this activity then only you can understand this lesson really well okay children so i showed you how to do this activity how to separate these seeds some of them you can separate into two equal halves easily right but some of them you cannot Understand children? Right. So we have to categorize these seeds into two groups. Here it says group them according to number of seed lobes or seed leaves inside the seed. Now it's very clear because we did this activity. Right. So seeds with single seed leaf, only one seed leaf and seeds with two seed leaves. Okay. Or two seed lobes. We will do that now. Right. What about beans, chickpeas, cowpea? You all know that they had two seed lobes. What about corn or maize? Only one seed lobes. You saw that I tried to separate it, but I couldn't separate it, right? Paddy also the same, only one seed lobe. Understand? And what about peanuts? It easily uh, separated into two parts, right? Green grains also the same. What else we did? We used arachnid as well, right? We will write these things. 
seeds with single seed leaf, corn, paddy, and nut. Right. You can write the other examples after doing the activity, okay? Right. And here seeds with two seed leaves, beans, chickpeas, cowpea, cowpea, green grams, Right, so peanuts, understand, right, so seeds with single seed leaves, uh, we categorize then even the seeds with two seed leaves. So during the experiment, I explained you the seeds with single seed leaves are known as monocot plants or monocot seeds. Right, and seeds with two seed leaves are known as dicot seeds. Right, mono means one. Seeds with single seed leaf or seed lobe, that those are known as monocot because they have only one seed leaf. Right, seeds with two seed leaves are known as dicot seeds. Di means two. Understand? So I explained this part during the activity. Right, we will go see the next. You may have seen that certain seeds can be divided easily into two seed lobes, whereas other seeds cannot be divided easily like that. We experience that, right? There are blank in the seeds that can be divided easily into two seed lobes. Or do they have two seed leaves, right? There are two seed leaves in the seeds that can be divided easily into two seed lobes, two parts. We will write, there are two seed lobes, two seed leaves, two seed leaves. In the seeds that can be divided easily into two seed lobes, these seed lobes are called, another name, cotyledons, cotyledons, right? These seed lobes are called cotyledons. Cotyledons. Seeds with two cotyledons are called dicot. I said di means two. Two cotyledons means dicots. Right? Seeds with two cotyledons are called dicot seeds or dicotyledonous seeds. Okay? Dicotyledonous seeds or dicot seeds. Okay. Some seeds cannot be divided into two seed lobes because they have only one cotyledon. Right? That is why they are known as monocot. Right? Only one cotyledon. This type of seeds are called monocot seeds or monocotyledonous seeds. Monocot seeds. Monocotyledonous seeds. Right. Okay. So, there are two seed leaves in the seeds that can be divided easily into two seed lobes. These seed lobes are called cotyledons. Seeds with two cotyledons are called dicotyledonous seeds or dicots, right? Some seeds cannot be divided into two seed lobes because they have only one cotyledon, right? This type of seeds are called monocot seeds or monocotyledonous seeds. Understand children? So what is the importance of these uh, seed leaves? Remember children, now 
when a seed is present, you know that when we plant this seed, it will grow as a new plant. It means that plant, the tiny plant or plant embryo present inside this seed. So when the plant, this tiny plant is still present in this seed, the nutrients are supplied by these seed leaves. Okay, children, nutrients are supplied by the seed leaves. That is the importance of presence of seed leaves. Understand? I hope this part is very clear now. We have another assignment to do. Take beans or green gram seeds and paddy or corn seeds, which were sold for about 24 hours. You have to take bean seeds or green gram seeds or paddy or corn seeds, which are sold for about 24 hours. Us, right? Keep them on a wet cloth and observe the growth. You can place these soft seeds on a wet cloth, right? Or even on wet cotton. And you can observe the growth uh, within certain days. But remember, when you keep them on wet cloth, daily basis you have to add a little bit of water to this cloth or the cotton, right? And plant other seeds. You can take number of seeds. Some of them you can uh, keep them on the wet cloth or cotton and you can observe the growth. Otherwise, the other seeds, you can take them and plant them in wet soil, right? Plant other seeds in pots with wet soil and observe the growth of the seeds, okay? You have to take these green gram or bean seeds and paddy or corn seeds. Now, you know that bean and green gram seeds, they have two cotyledons and paddy and corn seeds they have one cotyledon. So what are we trying to do in this experiment? We are going to check how the growth takes place in these two different types of seeds. One with two cotyledons and one with one cotyledon. Right children? So now we will go see the experiment. Right children? So we discussed about monocot and dicot seeds before. Now we are going to study the germination of this monocot and dicot seeds separately. So here we have two plants. We have uh, green gram plants and we have a set of paddy plants, right? So green gram plants, actually green gram seeds are dicot seeds. They have two seed lobes or two cotyledons. These paddy seeds, they have only one cotyledon. Therefore, they are coming under monocot seeds, right? So, first we will look into this carefully. There are different stages of germination of this seed. Now, can you all see? This is the beginning. You all can see this is just the seed present here. And a tiny plantlet is coming out, okay? And then next we have the second stage. This plant is, uh, this stem part is a little longer than the first plant. Right. What about the third one children? You all can see now this is the root and this is the stem. And you can see two tiny leaflets here. Right. And cotyledon is also here present along with the leaves. And look at this plant children. It is taller than this one and more tiny roots are here apart from this tap root, right? So at the end of this stem, you can see leaves are larger than this here, this one and cotyledons also present. So it's, when you go to this one, you can see, you can clearly see that two tiny leaves separated and the cotyledon also still here, right? So what about this one? It's, it's well grown leaves present here, two leaves present here and cotyledon is also present in the stem, right? So it's very clear that uh, when this plant grows in these uh, dicot uh, seeds, when the seed grows, that cotyledon, those seed lobes also come out of the soil and it goes up along with the plant leaves. Now children, look at this one. This is a paddy plant, uh, started with paddy seeds. And look at this one. This is also different stages, starting from here to this side, right? Different stages of germination. And you all can see roots present here. If you observe clearly, the cotyledon is still here, right? 
cotyledon is still here, it doesn't come out of the soil like in this dicot plants, right? So, cotyledon present here remaining underground, only the plant leaves present inside this leaves, inside this seed comes out of the soil and it grows as a bigger plant, right? So, that is one difference between these monocot and dicot plants. Uh, so, these dicot plants, cotyledons also come out of the soil along with the plant, plant leaves and the stem. But in these monocot plants, the cotyledon remains underground without coming out of the soil. So, only the leaves part come out of the soil and it grows as a new plant. So, I hope it's very clear. Right, children? Did you observe the experiment? I showed you different types of uh, plants under different stages. It was very clear, right, how the germination takes place. I hope it's very clear now, right. So, I showed you when you consider about this green gram. Here we use green gram and paddy. So, I showed you the different stages of the plants, right. Do you remember I showed you when we consider about the green gram seed? It had a tap root system, right. Do you remember it had these leaves? At the same time, there were two different types of leaves were there, different than the other leaves, green color leaves. Do you remember this? And what were they? They were the cotyledons. Okay. And do you remember I showed you the paddy plant as well? But paddy plant, it has a fibrous root system. And I showed you how the cotyledon was still remaining with the roots. Understand? So, I showed you that when the monocot plant grows, the cotyledon remains in the soil without coming out. But dicot plant, when they grow along with the plant, along with the other leaves, the cotyledons also come out. This is the difference between monocot and dicot growth. Okay, we will go see germination of monocot and dicot seeds. Right? So, two pictures are given, they are not named, only these parts are labeled, we don't know what type of germination is this. But by looking at the pictures, you should be able to identify which part is monocot and which part is dicot. Now, we all know how to find it out, right? Now, look at this picture, children. Here, the cotyledon is labeled here. Only the plant body has come out, but cotyledon remaining the soil. So, what is this plant children? This is a monocot plant. I told you during the germination of monocot plants, what happens? The cotyledon remains in soil, only the other plant body comes out, right? What about this one? You can clearly see now this is the seed and the plant comes out. Here you can clearly see green color leaves and two different leaf-like structures also there. What are they? These are the cotyledons. So, it means this is a dicot plant. Okay, only in dicot plants, cotyledons also come out of soil along with the plant. Okay, so we will name this germination of a monocot plant. Right. And germination of a dicot plant. Understand? So, it's very clear when we discuss about seeds, there are two different types of seeds, monocots and dicots. Monocots have only one cotyledon, that's why they are known as monocots, and dicots have two cotyledons, right? That's why they are known as dicots. So, during the germination of monocot and dicot seeds, monocot cotyledon, it will remain in the soil where that dicot cotyledon, it will come out of the soil along with the other parts of the plant. Understand? So, now we have to learn the differences between the monocot and dicot plants. We will go see that now.
So here we have a table to fill monocot plant and dicot plant. So according to the part, what are the differences between monocots and dicots, right? We will see. So monocot plants, give me one example. Using which plant we did the activity children? Under monocot plants, we used paddy, right? Under dicot plants, we use green grains. So if we take this paddy plant, using the paddy plant, right? Roots were like this. And green gram, okay, so I will take the first part, I will take roots, okay. Monocot plant, what can you tell about the root system? Monocot plants, now when we consider this paddy plant, it has a fibrous root system, right? Monocot plants have a fibrous root system. What about the dicot plants? Dicot plants have a tap root system. Understand? So here, monocot plant, fibrous root system. fibrous root system and here dicot taproot system. Taproot system. Right, then I will take a stem. Okay, so by looking at these tiny plants, you can't figure out whether the stem is uh, branched or unbranched. But remember, when we take a monocot plant, it doesn't have a branch stem. It means its stem is unbranched. But when we consider dicot plants like mango, they have branched stems, right? So monocot plants, stem is unbranched. Right? Dicot plants, branched. Okay, and then I'm going to take leaves. Leaves, remember children, if you observe this paddy leaf, any other, even coconut leaf, right? What type of leaf venation present? Parallel leaf venation. And if you take this green gram plant, it has a reticulate leaf venation. Okay, children. So, leaves, monocot plants, parallel leaf venation. Right? Dicot plant, reticulate. Leaf venation. And then I'm going to take flowers. Right. Remember children, when we take these monocot flowers, the number of petals is a specific number. It's like threes or multiples of threes. Three petals or multiples of threes. Multiples of threes, six or nine or twelve likewise. Understand children? So monocot flowers have either three petals or multiples of threes. What about dicot plants? Dicot plants have either four petals or five petals or the multiples of fours and fives. Understand children? Right, we will write. Monocot plant flowers, how many petals again? Three petals or multiples of trees. Three petals or multiples of trees. Right, here. 
405 petals. So they are multiples. Okay, so these are the main differences between monocot and dicot plants, starting from root, stem, leaves, and flowers. Right now, we know that we divide them into monocots and dicots because uh, seeds have one cotyledon or two cotyledons. But anyway, we will write that as well. Seeds, one cotyledon. Two cotyledons. Okay, children. So when we take monocot plants, monocot plants have a fibrous root system and dicot plants have a taproot system. Right? And monocot plant stems are unbranched and dicot plant stems are branched. They have branches. Okay. And monocot leaves have parallel leaf venation and dicot leaves have reticulate leaf venation. And monocot flowers have three petals or so multiples of threes. Okay. And dicot flowers have either four or five petals or so they are multiples. And we all know that seeds, seeds, monocot seeds have only one cotyledon. That is why they are known as monocot or monocotyledonous plant. And dicots have two cotyledons. That is why they are known as dicot or dicotyledonous plants. So what are the other examples, children? Now here I told you that is one example for monocot. We will write some more examples for monocots here. Right, now here I will write paddy, coconut, right? Arica nut, Kitul, okay children, what are the examples for dicots? There are many examples now here, green gram, mango, guava, jack, Okay, children. So there are many examples for monocots and dicots. Now you all can go out and observe the plants and you can identify by looking at these uh, characteristics. You can look at their stems, leaves, flowers and seeds and you can decide whether a certain plant is monocot or dicot. Can you look at the roots and decide? You cannot because you can't see the roots. But I tell you, by looking at a plant, you can't see a root, right? You can't see their root system, but how do you predict that which type of root systems that they might have, right? Even though you can't see roots, you can check the other parts. If they have an unbranched stem and if they have parallel leaf venation, if they have only one cotyledon sweet seeds, right? You can decide they have a fibrous root system. And at the same time, if a certain tree is branched, and if the leaves have reticulate leaf venation, and if flowers have four or five petals or multiples, or if their seeds have two cotyledons, you can come to a conclusion that they have a taproot system. Okay, children, so how interesting studying about these plants, right? So you all have to go out and observe the environment. Look at the trees, look at these plants and different types of plants, and you will see there are so many differences. Okay, so we have completed the lesson, children. Do you remember what we have learned here? We will go see. We have the summary. We will go through this. Plants which produce flowers are called flowering plants, whereas plants do not produce flowers are called non-flowering plants. This is where we began the lesson, right? There are some plants, they produce flowers and they are known as flowering plants. And some plants are there, they do not produce flowers throughout their lifetime and they are known as non-flowering plants. Okay, 
and the main parts of the flowering plants are roots, stem, leaves, flowers, fruits and seeds. Understand, although main parts of a plant usually perform one specific function, sometimes they are adapted for several other functions as well. Do you remember we discussed about plant roots? Right? They fix the plant to soil and they absorb water and minerals, but at the same time, there are some other functions as well. You remember how we discussed about these prop roots, tilt roots, respiratory roots as well. Right? So, other parts also the same. They have a main function, at the same time, they have other functions too. Right? And a vast variation can be seen among main parts of the plants. We discuss what are the differences. Okay? And flowering plants can be divided into two groups as monocotyledonous or monocot plants and dicotyledonous and dicot plants. Understand? So I hope this part is very clear. So you all know that you have to make this uh, field book related to this lesson. So when you make the field book, when you paste different pictures and when you do all the activities related to this lesson, I am sure you will understand this lesson very well. Right children? So what we have to do now is we have to do the exercises. We will start to do the exercises now. First, we are going to do the exercises given in the textbook. Okay. The table below indicates several kinds of plants with numbers identified by a group of students in a field trip to a forest. Right. So, when you go into your home garden also, you will find there are different types of plants, different numbers of the same plants as well. Right. We will go see. Name of the plant, number of plant. Kitul. Cashew, Dang, Kotamba, Benduru. Now this Benduru means dry in area. I will write it here. Dry in area. Cycas. Remember a non-flowering plant? Maduel. Maduel is a plant. It's a type of vine. It means it has a weak stem. Right? And Mimosa. Okay? Now, Dhani is another large tree. Kitul is a type of monocot plant with unbranched stems. Okay, children. So, display the data in a bar chart. Now, data is given number of plants, two Kitul plants, right? Three Cashew plants and four Dhan plants, four Kotamba plants as well and two dry area or Bendru plant and only one cycas plant and maduvel, this type of vines, 10 and mimosa, 12. Okay, children. So, you have to display this data given in a bar chart. You must have studied these types of charts in uh, maths, right? I'm sure you will understand this because you have already studied these type of charts. Okay, right. So, we have our table again. And here we have to uh, display this in a bar chart, right? So the question says display the data in a bar chart. There are different types of charts. We have to display this data in a bar chart, okay? Right. So you all have done bar charts. So if we draw a bar chart, there are two axes. This is known as the y axis, this is the x axis, right? y axis and x axis, right? So, first I am going to take to this side the number of plants. We will write it. Number of plants. Okay. And to this side, name of the plant. Name of the plant. Right? I will write the names first. Kitul. This one I will write Kitul. And Kajo. Dan. 
കൊട്ടാമ്പ മിനിമം നമ്പർ വൺ മാക്സിമം നമ്പർ So I'll take this side starting from zero. Yeah, I'm going to take two by two. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Okay, children. Right. So we'll start this. Kitol number of trees. Two number of plants. Two, right? So, right? Then cashew three between two and four three. then done four plants okay and cucumber also four right and benduru dry area 2 here you will have to remember when you draw these charts you have to use a ruler and your pencil okay children cycas 1 and madwell And the last one, mimosa, twelve. Okay, children. So it's very clear. Kitul two plants, cashew three plants, dung four plants, cucumber also four plants, dry area two, cycas one, maduvel ten and mimosa twelve. Understand, children? So this is the first question that we have to do. I hope this is very clear now. Number two. What is the most abundant plant found in this forest? Okay, most number of plants present in. Now, by looking at this table also, you can give the answer. Even by looking at the bar chart, you can get the answer. The most abundant plant is 
mimosa, the tallest bar here. Right? Okay. So, mimosa, 12 plants. Understand? So, this is mimosa. Right? So, if you want, we can write within brackets 12 plants. Okay? Right. The next one. Name a plant or plants in the above forest that found with following features. Okay. A weak stem, an unbranched stem, no flowers or non-flowering, a fibrous root system, compound leaves, fruits with fibrous outer layer and having root nodules. Okay. So, from the given list, you have to select the plants uh, according to these features. Okay. A weak stem. I already explained to you that Madhuval has a weak stem. Madhuval. An unbranched stem. Okay, children. What are the plants with unbranched stems? Here I can see Kitul. Kitul is unbranched. We can write Kitul. Cashew, Dang, Kotamba, they have branches. Right? So we will write Kitul. Unbranch stem, kitul. No flowers or non flowering plants. What are the non flowering plants present here? Kitul, cashew, dang, kotamba, they all are coming under flowering plants. Benduru, no flowers, dry in area. Right? And cycas also, no flowers. So we will write. And what about Maduel and Mimosa? They have flowers. Okay? Yeah, Benduru. Benduru or dry area. You can even write Cycas. Right? A fibrous root system. Fibrous root system. You can see Kitul has a fibrous root system. Even Cycas also has a fibrous root system. Okay, children. So we will write Kitul. Compound leaves. Mimosa has compound leaves and even Cycas has compound leaves. We will write Mimosa. Cycas. Right? So, fruits with fibrous outer layer. Fruits with fibrous outer layer. We discussed under fruits and seed dispersal. Remember, fruits with fibrous outer layer. Right? We will go see. Cashew, dung. No, dung fruit is a small uh, purple color. Kotamba, yes. Uh, yes, kotamba is the answer. Okay, having root nodules, the last one, root nodules, we all know that mimosa or touch me not plant has root nodules. Okay, so we will write, having root nodules, mimosa. Right children, so I hope you understood this part, we will move to the next one. Select a monocotyledonous and a dicotyledonous plant out of the plants given above. Right from these plants given, you have to select a monocotyledonous and dicotyledonous plant each. Right? We will select. Okay. Kitul. Kitul is a monocot. And cashew. Cashew is a dicot. I am going to select kitul and cashew. Right? We will write. Select a monocotyledonous and dicotyledonous plant out of the plants given above. Right? So, monocot, kitul, 
and dicot. I'm going to write the short form instead of monocotyledonous. I'm going to write monocot, and instead of dicotyledonous, I'm going to write dicot. Casual. Okay, the next question. Write one major difference of leaves, stem, roots, and seeds of above two plants. So, indirectly, they ask here the differences between monocots and dicots. Now, we know because we uh, learn these monocots and dicots you see in another table. Do you remember that? Right? So, we will write down. Write one major difference of leaves, stem, roots and seeds of above two plants. Okay? We will write. So, I am going to do this as a table. So, part and write one major difference of above two plants, no? So, here I am going to write Kitul and here Kajo. Monocot and Dicot, right? So, first part leaves. What is the main difference among monocot and dicot leaves? That is of leaf venation, right? Kitul or monocot has parallel leaf venation. Parallel venation. Understand? And dicot has reticulate venation. Okay. And the next one, stem. What can you tell about the kitul stem or monocot stem? Do they have branches? No, they don't have branches, right? And cashew, they have branches. So, this is a stem unbranched. And cashew branched. Okay, next one roots. So, what can you tell about the monocot roots? What type of root system they have? They have a fibrous root system, right? And cashew has a Tap root system because it is a dicot plant, right? So, roots of Kitul, fibrous root system. And here, tap root system. Okay, and the next one seeds. What can we tell about the seeds, children? So, Kitul is a monocot plant. Therefore, when we consider the seeds or monocot seeds, they have only one cotyledon, right? And dicot seeds have two cotyledons. Okay. One cotyledon two cotyledons. Right. Okay, children. So, the differences between kitul and cashew, which means monocot and dicot, leaves, here parallel venation and reticulate venation. Stem, here unbranched and cashew branched. Right? 
and roots, kitul fibrous root system and cashew tap root system. And seeds, kitul one cotyledon, that is why they are known as monocots, and cashew two cotyledons, right? So those are the differences. So we finish the exercises given in the textbook. We are going to do some additional exercises as well. Right. We have additional exercises. Number one, right? Select the correct answer. So four answers are given. You have to select the most correct answer. Okay. Number one, a plant that stores food in the tap root. There are some plants they store their food in the roots. Some of these plants, they store their food in the taproot and some of them are in the lateral roots, okay? Carrot, manioc, sweet potato, potato. Answer is carrot. Carrot is actually a taproot, right? What we eat as carrot is the taproot, okay? So carrot is the answer. What about manioc and sweet potato? They also store their food in the roots but not in the taproot. Right? They store their food in the lateral roots. What about potato? Potato is an underground stem. Okay, so answer is carrot. Plant that stores food in the tap root. Right? An underground stem that stores food. An underground stem. Radish. Radish is actually not an underground stem, but it stores food in the root. Okay? Potato. Yes, potato is an underground stem. Even here I mentioned. Okay. Sweet potato and beetroot, they are storage roots. Okay. So an underground stem that stores food is potato. A plant with compound leaves. What are the compound leaves, children? Compound leaves means leaves with a leaf blade that is completely divided into leaflets. What are the examples? Curry leaves, mimosa, right? Those are the examples. Okay, there are some other leaves that are divided but not completely. They are coming under simple leaves. We will see the answers. Umbrella, yes, umbrella has compound leaves. What about manioc? Manioc, do you remember manioc leaves? It was like this. The leaf blade is divided but not completely. Right from the base, all these parts combine. Therefore, even though the leaf blade is divided, this is not coming under compound leaves. That is because leaf blade is partially divided. Right, children? So even pepper and bitter gourd leaves are partially divided, not completely. But umbrella leaf blade is completely divided. Therefore, it is coming under compound leaves. Right? Answer number one. Number four. The female part of the flower is known as, what is the female part? That is gynosia. Androsia. Androsia means the male part. Right? Gynosia means the female part. Sepals. Sepals are not coming under either male or female parts. Ovary is coming under gynosia. It's part of gynosia. Right? So the entire female part is known as the gynosia. The answer with only flowering plants is mango, flowering, paddy, also flowering, maize means corn, that's also flowering. What about pinus? Pinus is non flowering. Therefore, this answer is not right. Okay? Dry area. Dry area is definitely non-flowering. Therefore, we don't need to check this answer because the first part is dry area. Next one. Papo, Jack, Tamarind, Mandarin. They all have flowers, right? Because they produce fruits. They have fruits means they produce flowers. They are flowering plants. So answer number three is right. Next one. Salvinia, Cycas, Pinus, Ferns. They all are non-flowering plants. Okay, so answer is number three. Answer with only flowering plants is pepper, jack, tamarind, mandarin. Right, 
Number six, the type of fruits that support plant stem seeds. Do you remember we learned that there are some roots with special functions, right? We will see the type of fruits that support plant stem seeds. Crop fruits. Remember what crop fruits are? Do you remember the banyan trees? These large trees, they have branches. From the branches, crop fruits arise. So what is the function of crop fruits? They support the branches. But here they ask that support plant stems. Therefore, crop fruit is not the answer. Still fruits. Do you remember the pandanus plant? And even rampe. They have stems like this. Right? To support the stem, they have still roots starting from the lower part of the stem. Right? So what is the function of these still roots? They support the plant stem. Therefore, that is the answer. Aerial roots, aerial roots found in plants like uh, orchid. They absorb water vapor for the plant. Right? Respiratory roots can be found in mangrove plants like kiralo, kadol. Right? So they are very important for exchange of gases. Okay, so the answer is still truth. Right. Number seven. A function that is not done by underground stems is a function that is not done by. Right. Storage of food. Do you remember under underground stems we discussed about potato, ginger, they all store food. Therefore, this is not the answer. Vegetative propagation. Do you remember I explained you if you take a piece of this ginger, right? And if you plant it somewhere, it grows as a new plant. Therefore, this is also a function. The question asks a function that is not done by underground stems, right? Photosynthesis. Can they do photosynthesis when the stem present underground? They don't get sunlight. Therefore, can they do photosynthesis? No. Therefore, photosynthesis is not a function done by underground stems. That is the answer. What about perination? What is perination? I told you sometimes during unfavorable environmental conditions, even though the part that present above the ground dies, right? The underground stem can remain and uh, when the favorable conditions come, they can grow as a new plants. That process is known as perination, right? So survival of some plants throughout unfavorable environmental conditions is known as perination, right? So perination is done by underground stems. Therefore, here a function that is not done by underground stems is photosynthesis. Right, next one. Protection of flower bud is done by when the flower is still a bud that is protected by the green color sepals. Remember I explained you under the functions of sepals? Right? That is protected by the sepals. Okay. Petals, gynosium, stamens are not coming under the answer. Understand children? Right. Number nine. A plant that doesn't store food in the tap root. There are plants, they store their food in the roots. Some of them store their food in the tap root and some of them store their food in the lateral roots. Right. A plant that doesn't store food in the tap root is carrot, tap root. Carrot, what we eat. Right. This is a tap root. These tiny hair-like structures are the lateral roots. Right? Beetroot and radish also the same. But dahlia is not coming under a plant that stores food in the tap root. Okay? So, answer is dahlia. Number 10. Another characteristic of a plant that has leaves with reticulate venation. What is the meaning of reticulate venation? Some plant leaves, their veins are arranged like a net. Right? 
they are branched and arranged like a knit okay so this is known as reticulate venation so which type of plants have these type of leaves with reticulate venation dicot plants right children so another characteristic of a plant that has leaves with reticulate venation indirectly this question ask you another characteristic of a dicot plant right another characteristic of a dicot plant so these type of tricky questions you have to read very carefully okay seeds with one seed globe what is that monocot plants right seeds with one seed globe or one cotyledon because they have only one cotyledon we call them monocots so one seed lobe means monocot right dicots have two seed lobes tap root system yes that is right that is the answer number three flowers with three petals or its multiples that is a monocot characteristic right dicot plants have flowers with four or five petals or they are multiples okay unbranched stem dicots have a branch stem therefore here answer is tap root system Okay, next one. Production of food in plants mainly occur in. Where do the plants mainly produce their food? What is the main green color part? Leaves, right? Leaves is the answer. Roots, flowers, fruits, those are not coming under. Leaves is the answer. Okay, production of food in plants means photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is mainly done by the plant leaves, right? Number 12, bamboo tree has, bamboo tree, have you seen bamboo trees? It's like this, okay, leaves like this, okay. Bamboo tree has a taproot system, no. This is a monocot plant, okay, therefore bamboo has a fibrous root system. A fibrous root system is the answer. Prop roots, no. And stilt roots, no. Banyan has prop roots. Pandanus and rampi have stilt roots. Therefore, bamboo tree has a fibrous root system because that is a monocot plant. Understand, children? Right. Exercises 2. Right, number 1. What are stilt roots? What is the meaning of stilt roots? Do you remember where we found stilt roots? A pandanus plant, right? So, where can we see stilt roots, children? They start from the lower part of the plant stem, right? So, these are the stilt roots. They arise from the lower part of a plant stem. What is the function of these stilt roots? They support the stem, right? Because of the support given by these stilt roots, this plant can stay erect without falling down. Additional support is given. Understand? So what are stilt roots? The roots that arise from, from the lower part of the stem and you can write additionally still roots give an extra support to the stem. Right. Right. What are still roots? The roots that arise from the lower part of the stem and still roots give an extra support to the stem. Right. Still roots give an extra support to the stem. Understand children? Write two examples for plants with stilt roots. We learned now. What are the plants with stilt roots, children? 
we learn pandanus and rampe, right? Pandanus, rampe, right? Examples, pandanus, rampe, okay? Additional exercises, three. Some plants that can be seen in the environment are given below. Idda, balsam, salvinia, cypress, coconut, mango, guava, ferns, moss and gardenia. Right? Write the flowering plants given in the above list. Select the non-flowering plants given in the above list. Right? You have to group them to flowering and non-flowering. It's very easy now, right? Idda, idda has a small white flower. Therefore, it's a flowering plant. Idda. Balsam. Balsam also has a beautiful flower. There are colorful balsam flowers as well. Balsam. Salvinia. It's a non-flowering plant. They do not produce flowers, right? Salvinia here. Right. Cypress, cypress also no flowers. Coconut, coconut has a flower. Mango, there yeah, is flower. Guava, flowering plant. And what about ferns? Ferns, no flowers. It's an ornamental plant, but there are no flowers. Moss, you can see moss on walls and uh, the surfaces of rocks and trees. No flowers, right? What about gardenia? Gardenia has a very beautiful and very sweet flower with nice fragrance, okay? Right, children. So, this was really easy, isn't it? Right. Next exercise. Write two main functions of plant roots. So, we learn about plant roots and their functions. Do you remember I explained you what are the main functions and the additional functions? And we also learn about some special functions as well, right? So do you remember what are the main functions? Now I told you if you are asked to write the main functions, you can't write those special functions or additional functions. Okay, so what are the main functions of plant roots? Yes, plant roots can fix the plant to the soil. And also plant roots are very important to absorb soil, water and minerals. Okay, we will write that. Number one, write two main functions, fixing the plant to soil. Right, number two, absorption of Absorption of water and minerals. On the side. Okay, plants roots can fix the plant to the soil and plant roots can absorb water and minerals as well. Those are the main functions. Number two, write another function of plant roots then that of the main functions you mentioned above, another function, a different one, other than these two things. Do you remember I told you some plant roots can produce new plants? I hope you remember this one. This is known as vegetative propagation. That is another function. Okay. Production of new plants. Okay, this is known as vegetative reproduction or 
vegetative propagation. Vegetative propagation. Right. Write examples for the plants that propagate from roots. It means they ask what are the plants that produce new plants using their roots. What are the plants? Do you remember I explained you? Curry leaves and belly and breadfruit. Those are the examples. Okay. Curry leaves. Breadfruit. Belly. Right, children. So we completed right two main functions of plant roots, fixing the plant to the soil and absorption of water and minerals from soil. And right another function of plant roots than that of the main functions you mentioned above, production of new plants or vegetative propagation. So write examples for the plants that propagate from roots, curry leaves, breadfruits, belly. Understand? Next one, write four main functions of plant stems. Now we discussed about plant roots, we discussed about the functions of plant stems as well. So I told you there are our main functions and additional functions. What are the main functions children? Now you all know that plant stem, it bears the fruits and seeds, flowers and leaves uh, in the plant. That is one of the main functions. What are the other functions? It gives the rigidity to the plant, right? So shall we write down these things? Write four main functions. Number one, bears flowers, leaves, fruits, buds, and seeds. Right. Number two, the stem supports the plant by giving a rigidity, right? Keeping it rigid. Supports the plant plant by keeping rigid. Now here remember children there are two types of plants strong plants or strong stems and weak stems right strong stems and weak stems so only strong stems can support the plant by keeping rigid weak stems they need the support of another plant to climb through the plant okay so we have right four functions right four main functions what is the other main function I explained you? I told you another main function is there. Transportation of water and food throughout the plant body. Now we have only one function. How do we write two other functions? We have to write four. I am going to break this into two and write. See how I am going to do that. Number three. Transports. water from roots because roots absorb water from roots to the other parts right number four so water is transported from roots to the other parts through the stem, right? And at the same time, during photosynthesis, plant leaves produce food, that food is also transported to the other parts through the stem, right? Transports, food from leaves to the other parts.
Okay, children? So this is very clear, right? So I explained you during the lesson three main functions of plant stems. Here we have to write four. So the third one I brought as two points. It's very easy, right? Next exercise. What are climbing roads? Now do you remember what climbing roads are? You remember we discussed about uh, this beetle and pepper plants. They have a weak stem. So if they want to go up to get enough sunlight, they need to attach to another plant. So how do they do that? By these climbing roots. Okay. They have these sticky climbing roots. So they can attach to another plant using these climbing roots. Okay. So what are climbing roots? They are special types of roots present in the plants with weak stems. Right? We will write. What are climbing roots? The type of roots. The type of roots that help weak plant stems. Weak plants to attach to another plant. To another plant. The type of roots that help weak plants to attach to another plant. Okay. Write two examples for climbing roots. What are the examples? Beetle, pepper, they are coming under examples. Pepper, little. Right, children? So I hope this is clear. Exercise 7. What are respiratory roots? Where can we find respiratory roots? Do you remember mangrove plants? In the mangrove environment, soil doesn't have enough oxygen, enough air. Therefore, for the growth of the plants, they have special types of roots that come out of soil. These are known as respiratory roots. What is the function of those respiratory roots? Exchange of gases with air, atmosphere. Right? We will write down. What are respiratory roots? The type of roots adapted or specialized. Adapted to exchange. Air with the atmosphere. Right? What are respiratory roots? The type of roots adapted to exchange air with the atmosphere. Give another name for respiratory roots. Do you remember I told you breathing roots? That's another name. Breathing roots. In some books you will find uh, breathing roots or respiratory roots and another names are pencil roots or knee roots. That's also right. But the most common name we call instead of these uh, respiratory roots, in addition to these respiratory roots, we call them breathing roots. Okay? Write two examples for respiratory roots. What are the mangrove plants with respiratory roots? Kerala, Kadol, these are the examples. Kerala, Kadol. Right? Two examples for respiratory roots. Additional exercises 8. A diagram of half flower of shoe fly is given below. Name the parts indicated from A to H. So, I hope you remember this now. I showed you how to label this one. I even uh, showed you a real flower, right? Real half flower as well. Okay, children. So shall we do this one now? Okay. So what is A? A is coming under gynosium. This is stigma. 
stigma. So you all can start before me. Before I explain this, you all can do all these activities, exercises, right? Answer all the questions. So when I explain this one, you can check whether your answers are right. Okay? So here's stigma. B. B is androsium, stamen. Okay? C. What is C? This thread-like structure. What is this? Starting from stigma, runs up to this part. That is style. Right. D. D petals. The most prominent part. Petals. E. The green color part. Those are sepals. F. What is F? It goes up to here. F is ovary. And G. These egg-like structures, ovules. And the last one, H. That is a long stalk. Stigma, stamen, style, petals, sepals, ovary, G is ovules and H, stalk. Understand? We'll move to the other one. Number one, write examples for the plants that propagate from leaves. It means the examples for plants that produce new plants with leaves, using their leaves. What are the examples? Do you remember I showed you the tiny roots arise from that acapana leaf or bryophyllum leaf? You remember that, right? So what are the plants? Examples for plants that propagate from leaves? Acapano, bryophyllum. Acapana, bryophyllum. Another example, begonia. Okay. Number two, why are plant leaves green? Why are they green? Because of the presence of a special color pigment called, what is the name children? Chlorophylls. Chloro means green. Because of the presence of chlorophylls, plant leaves are green in color. Right? Now, this chlorophyll is essential factor for photosynthesis. You all know that. Why are plant leaves green? Because of the presence of... Because of the presence of... Of a green color pigment called... What is the name? Chlorophylls. Right? Why are plant leaves green? Because of the presence of a green pigment called chlorophylls. Isn't this very easy, children? Right. Additional exercises 10. What are underground stems? What are underground stems? There are some stems, they grow inside the soil. These are known as underground stems. Okay, so what are underground stems? The stems that grow inside the soil. What are the examples, children? What are the examples? Ginger, potato, these are coming under examples, right? Write two examples for plants that store food in aerial stems. What is the aerial stem? A normal stem that we can see from outside in the aerial part of the plant. Right? 
Write two examples for plants that store food in aerial stems. Do you remember I explained you some plant stems like kittle, sugarcane, they store their food in the aerial stem. I hope you remember that. We will write. Kittle. We get kittle flower from this stem. Sugarcane. This juice present in sugarcane stem is used to make sugar. Right? Next one. Write examples for photosynthetic stems. It means stems that do photosynthesis. If they have to do photosynthesis, they have to be green color. So they ask the examples for green color stems. What are the examples? We already discussed these things. I explained you cactus, Navahandi, Hirasa, right? We will write cactus. Navahandi, Irasa, Hatavariya, right children? So these are examples and there are so many other examples. If you take a look at the environment, you will find so many other examples as well, okay? Right. And the next one, there are two types of leaf venation. What are they? Based on the arrangement of veins in the leaf, there are two types of leaf venations. What are they children? Yes, reticulate venation and parallel venation. Number one, reticulate venation. What is the meaning of reticulate venation? When the veins present as a net. Reticulate venation. Examples jack, guava, mango, they are coming under the leaves with reticulate venation. Right? So, what type of plants have reticulate venation? Dicot plants. Number two, parallel venation. Parallel venation. Here, veins are parallel to each other. What type of plants have parallel venation? Monocot plants like paddy, bamboo, right children? The next one. Which plant family has plants with root nodules? Do you remember I told you a special plant family has plants with root nodules and those plants are known as legume plants? You remember that, right? So, this family's name is family leguminosae, right? We call them legume plants. So, which plant family has plants with root nodules? Family leguminosae. Leguminosae. So, legume family is also right. I will write within brackets legume plants. are the examples for legumes? Short form, we call them legumes as well. What are the examples? Lentils, beans and wing beans, mimosa, they all are coming down to legume plants. Right, okay. Next exercise, a diagram of leaf is given below. You have to name the parts given. Shall we start this? A, what is A? Leaf base. Now this is very easy for you all. Leaf base. B. It is the leaf stalk or petiole. Right? Petiole. C. Midrib. And D. Veins. E leaf tip. And F, this is the leaf blade. And finally, G is the leaf margin. Right, 
that's an easy one, okay? Next one. First question, what is gynosium? What is gynosium? That is the female part of the flower. Now, flower has main parts. Uh, there are petals, there are sepals, gynosium and androsium, okay? What is gynosium? The female part of the flower. The female part of the flower. Right? Gynosium has three main parts. What are they? Do you remember the gynosium? It was like this. Another name for gynosium children. What is the other name? Pistil. Right? Three main parts present. What are the three main parts? That is stigma. I'll write here number one. Stigma. Style. And ovary. Okay. So, these are the ovules that is present inside ovary. Okay, ovules. Stigma, style and ovary. Right? Okay. The next one. What is androsium? Now, gynosium is the female part. Androsium is the male part of the flower. Okay? The male part of the flower. Okay, what is the function of the androsium? What is the main function of the androsium? I told you they produce pollen, right? Pollen has male cells. The main function of the androsium is production of pollen, right? What is the main function? Production of pollen. Right. Next one. Draw a diagram to show the parts of a stamen. Now stamen means androsium, the male part. Parts of a stamen, how do we draw parts of a stamen? It has two main parts. What are the two main parts? This part is known as the anther. And this is filament. Right? When we take the anther and filament together, that is known as the stamen. So, I hope you understood this part. We'll move to the next one. Okay, the next one. Write four methods of dispersal of fruits and seeds. Fruits and seeds are dispersed by different methods. I explained you four methods. What are they? By water, by wind, by animals and by explosive mechanisms. We will write. By wind, by water, by animals and by explosive mechanisms. By wind, by water, by animals and by explosive mechanisms. Right, children? Write the characteristics of fruits and seeds dispersed by animals. What are the special adaptations of fruits and seeds dispersed by animals? Now, I told you there are fruits and seeds dispersed by animals. There are special features of these fruits which helps them to disperse using animals' help. Right? So, write the characteristics. What are the special features? What are the special adaptations, children? I told you most of these fruits and seeds dispersed by animals, they have a fleshy part that animals can feed on, right? And some of these seeds have claw-like structures to cling to animal fur. 
right? And some of them are very colorful. And some of them are, they have special patterns to mislead animals. I hope you remember all these factors. We will write them. Write the characteristics of fruits and seeds dispersed by animals. I will write presence of a fleshy part. That is edible. So they can feed on it. Number two. Presence of claw like structures, hook like structures, structures to cling to animal fur. Right. Give me another example. Presence of different patterns. Different patterns to mislead animals. To mislead animals. Right? Presence of a fleshy part that is edible. Presence of claw-like structures to cling to animal fur. Presence of different patterns to mislead animals. Okay? Right. right. Next we have a diagram of a flowering plant is given below. Name A to I. This is also very easy because we have already done this one. Okay? What is A? A is the Apex and apical bud. Write the bud present in the apex of the plant. Apical bud. Apical bud. And B. Flowers. C. C is the branch. What about D? D is also a bud. This is known as the lateral bud or axillary bud. E. Fruits. F. Leaves. G. Is the stem H is the main root is known as the tap root tap root and I lateral roots okay a apical bud B flower, C branch, D lateral bud, E fruits, F leaves, G stem, H tap root and I lateral roots. Right. Okay. Again, this diagram given here. What is the common name given to H and I? The name given to H and I together. So this H and I tap root and lateral roots, H and I present underground. We can't see that part. So the common name given to H and I is a root system. Root system. Next one. What is the common name given to all the other parts except H and I? All the other parts means this entire part except H and I. So this part we can see that part present above the ground. What is this part children? This is known as the shoot system. I told you there are two systems 
in the plant root system or underground system and shoot system. Okay, so what is the common name given to all the other parts except H and I is shoot system. Okay, I hope this is clear. Write down a benefit that rhizobium bacteria gets from mimosa plant and mimosa plant gets from the bacteria due to rhizobium bacteria living in the root nodules of the mimosa plant. We discussed about this, right? I told you mimosa plant is uh, a type of plant that has root nodules. What is the specialty of these root nodules, children? They have a special bacteria in it and their name is rhizobium, right? So why do they live together? What does the root of the plant get and what do those bacteria get from the plant? Yes, I explained you. What is the benefit to the bacteria? Why do they live in these root nodules? They get the nutrients from the plant and also they get a place to live, right? So benefit to the bacteria, they get nutrients and a place to live. So benefit to the plant, you all know that bacteria, this rhizobium bacteria can give nitrogen needed to the plant, right? So both the bacteria and plant are benefited. So the bacteria and the plant live together and they both are benefited, right? So this type of relationship is known as symbiosis. You all are going to learn about symbiosis in the upper grades, right children? Benefit to the plant, the bacteria provides nitrogen to the plant. All right, the bacteria provides nitrogen to the plant. Okay, benefit to the bacteria from the plant they get nutrients and a place to live. Benefit to the plant, the bacteria provides nitrogen to the plant. Right children? So we have come to the end of the lesson. So I explained you when we consider the plants, there is a vast diversity, there are so many differences uh, of the plants in the environment, right? And you all have to go out, look at the plants and get more knowledge about the plants. Only if you all observe them carefully, you will see there are so many differences. And I told you that you all have to make this field book. And I'm sure after making this field book, you will understand this lesson really well. Okay. And we did exercises. We did the exercises given in the textbook. And we did other additional exercises as well. You all have to practice these exercises again and again. So I'm sure you will understand this lesson really well after doing all these exercises again, right?